disgruntledduck.com. Hey guys, welcome again. Another review video. We've got the uh, Tamiya Japanese medium tank type 97. So let's unbox this, let's give it a little look and uh, see what we've got. It's a Tamiya kit. So it's an older Tamiya kit as well. I don't off the top of my head know what year this is from. But we've got some rubber tracks. Fairly decent amount of detail. You know, it's what you expect from a Tamiya kit. Now, the reason I bought this one was I've managed to get myself into a group build on Instagram and it's a 1945 group build. Um, so I thought, what, what should we do? Should we do something Russian? Enter in Germany? Should we do something German? Should we do um, an allied thing? And I thought, do you know what? The, uh, the Pacific was the last place the war ended, so let's do something from that. I've never built any Japanese army before, so this should be should be fun. Should be something different. A uh, little bit of uh, research to do, obviously, as I've never built anything from that uh, that country before. So let's let's get on with the review. So we've got the hull. Again, as you expect, there's a nice little bit of detail on the side. Pretty simple. The top of the hull, this, now this I like, there's a fair bit of detail on there. Now, is it just me, or is it the fact that they're a Japanese company and they're going to make their tanks look awesome with detail? As I'm saying, it's an older kit, but there's a hell of a lot of detail on there. Um, could be wrong. You know, but that's nice. They all get, look at all those little rivets are going to pick up so nicely. You can see that. You see those rivets everywhere. It's insane. Going to look really nice. The turret, again, a ton of rivets. Um, that's nice. So, or as soon as I'm seeing this, I'm like, this is going to weather up so nicely. We've got three main sprues. We've got some poly caps. For the uh, for the wheels, so let's look at those first. We've got two sets of poly caps actually, so they're going to be for the uh, yeah for the wheels for the road wheels, for the cogs. Again, a pretty standard set of cogs. Can't really go wrong. I think Tamiya's got to be my go-to company. I mean, I know there are some like Academy's nice, Hobby Boss is uh, half decent with some of their stuff. Um, Meng's pretty awesome, but I mean you're going a bit bit more top level on some of those stuff, a bit higher up the food chain. But I think Tamiya, for what it is and the price you pay, they have some amazing, amazing kits. The tooling's really nice. Detail on that is really nice. Um, it's going to be a solid kit. It's going to be quite easy to build, I reckon, as well. Usually you get quite a nice fit with these. I've heard that the, uh, the, A10, the A10 Thunderbolt is a horrible, horrible, horrible model to build by them, which is uh, the exception, because everything I've really built of theirs has, uh, has been really nice. I was building recently a T55 from a company called, I think it's e -E -C -S -I or ESI -E -S -C -I or EC, yeah, one of those. The company went bust. Um, and they they sold out to Italy, to Italieri. And my God, some of the fits on some of the parts I was building on uh, it wasn't actually the T55. It was a D Mag I was building of theirs, and it was it was just a nightmare. Um, it, well, it was it was quite a complex little model kit, and it wasn't fun. Really, is my nutting. So anyway, the next sprue. So we've got more of the outside parts, um, some grills, exhaust again. All of this, 90% of this stuff is a really nice little bit of textured detail on the outside as well. So all this is going to come up really nicely. That's straight out of the box. You don't really need much aftermarket park aftermarket parts to get a nice finish on this. So yeah, that's the rest of the hull. It's not a complex model either. It kind of reminds me. It's um, we built the Walker Bulldog. Very similar. Not too many parts, but again. A great little bit of detail on there which I like about these kits you can go crazy with some of the more expensive kits there's so many parts and it's like why am I doing this you know so the final sprue um, I don't know if this is a handrail or an aerial whether we're gonna figure that out when we're making it rest of the turret uh, the uh, the gun parts um, 
so the machine gun's going to slip through there. Got a couple of little Japanese fillers here. Um, I'm not going to add them to this because I'm just not great with figures. That's something I need to work on later down the line. But uh, well, I don't know, mate. We could, no, we could do a we could do a diorama, couldn't we? It is for a group build. We could we could throw out the uh, we could push out the boat on this one. But yeah, so there's that sprue. That's quite nice actually. Figures are quite detailed. So yeah, all in all, very nice. Now, instructions, instructions, instructions. Here's our instructions. So Tamiya kits. Tamiya don't mess around with their instructions. Simple. Nice and simple. Anyone who's ever built a kit, a Tamiya kit at least, will know very nice, very easy to follow. They're going to tell you the colours to use as you're going along. You get these nice little gimmicks in the sidebar as well here. So sometimes these might tell you how to add a little bit of detail on your own. In this case, um, it's showing uh, how the rollers are fixed and how to paint the figures. And also how to finish the tracks. And then finally, We've got the paint schemes and we have got our decals, which are here. Nice little set of decals. I hope hopefully that's focusing for you. And we can do what's this? Uh, one, two, three, four, five different tanks we can build up there. So that's nice. And again, that's a great little thing with the Tamiya. And I've, I've, got, I've got to be honest, I think they've gone out a little bit further out on this because it's a Japanese company, it's a Japanese tank. But there is a, a wealth of information. So if you're a history buff as well, which I think you're not really going to be in this uh, in this hobby, building these things if you don't want to know a little bit of the history, you've got straight away a little bit of information there for you. So that's basically the kit. It's a nice kit, it's a Tanya kit. But as you know with me, I do love a bit of photo etch. So here is the photo etch. It's only one fret. So you don't need to fret. <laughs> right, no more jokes for the day. So you've got the grills, but mostly you've got a lot of these little gimmicks, which seem to be, oh, they look like a pain to build. Look at those. So this seems to be all the little straps or the little, uh, little handrail things, handles. So that's gonna be an absolute nightmare. There's tons of them. Tons of them, look at them. Look at that. All of these little ones. But I mean, that's the great thing. With this, you don't need to use all of that. Depending on your skill level, um, you can just use the grills and you're gonna lift the, lift the level of the model. Because I think it's already, it's already really highly detailed. And I think some of this stuff, I'm working on uh, a couple wagon and I'm doing the door handles in Photo Edge and it's killing me and I've just had to stop doing it and move on to something else in a minute because it's just, it's just hour after hour of these fiddly little things. But you know, it's, um, it's a personal thing. If you, if you have the skill, if you have the eyes, you want to do that or just use half of that and you're still going to up the level of your game straight away. So that's my, uh, that's my unboxing review. Hope you enjoy it. I hope that it's given you a clue of what's inside and what you might expect and uh, maybe if you want to buy it this has helped you a little bit and until next time happy modeling and i'll see you guys soon don't forget to hit the subscribe button give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment